So, I don't know. Again, I just I do not envy anybody in that position. I don't. Um, but I do agree that when a, when a country is invading another sovereign nation, and it's not for stopping human rights violations uh, or anything tangible, it's literally he wants to bring them back into the USSR. He wants to bring, he wants to geographically position Russia the way it was positioned geographically during the time of the USSR. Before so much of that uh, country was lost and became its own individual independent countries. As always, there is more to cover. There is more to cover. According to the title of this, even Switzerland is getting tougher on Russia. EU sanctions will apply there. The European Union sanctions against Russia will apply even in Switzerland. So let's take a look at the article, see what we have to work with here. Geneva, Russians invasion of uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has put Switzerland, which is, has a much vaunted history of ne uh, neutrality, to the test. And along with it, the country's traditional role as an international intermediary and reputation as a safe haven for the assets of Russia's rich and most powerful. The Swiss executive branch stopped short of announcing unilateral sanctioned sanctions against Russian interests after Moscow's blistering military action in Ukraine. Instead, the Federal Council opted to fall in line with the European Union and pledged that Russian individuals and companies hit with EU sanctions will not be able to evade them in Switzerland, despite it not being one of the European Union's 27 member states. The government said Friday that financial intermediaries in Switzerland were now banned from starting new business relationships with 363 Russian people and four Russian companies. Any existing businesses must be reported to the Swiss Economic Affairs Secretariat. Further steps are under consideration. While a hearty crackdown compared to other Western nations aimed at pushing Moscow for its invasion of Ukraine, the impact could be felt. The rich Alpine nation has been the biggest recipient of transactions by Russian private individuals ahead of Britain, Spain, Luxembourg, and the United States, according to a report compiled by the Swiss embassy in Moscow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm approaching an article limit. It's fine. It's going to scream at me for that. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, even Switzerland is pissed, which is good. This is, this is you know, what we want. In a situation like this, this is what we want. This is what we want. Uh, Darth Crystal, thank you for redeeming your points, but that has to go for an because we're in the middle of an armistice. Vanity Panic YouTube. Both of you. You know that we're in the middle of an armistice. For those over on YouTube, our, our armistice are in effect, which means for an hour, uh, all OWOs are transformed into that. Uh, if they use the war words, they get transformed as well. So... That said, let's continue on. Uh, Switzerland has for years been by far the most important destination worldwide for rich Russians to manage their wealth, the report said, adding that net transfers of Russian taxpayers to Switzerland totaled $2.5 billion in 2020. The Swiss news agency, uh, SDAATS, reported net transfers of $1.8 billion in the first half of 2021. Federal Councillor Guy Parmelin, the head of... The Federal Economic Affairs Department noted that Switzerland was bound to follow UN sanctions, but could concede whether to follow European Union sanctions based on criteria such as foreign policy and legal aspects, including legislation that has enshrined neutrality into Swiss law. Swiss authorities are, in essence, extending measures set up in 2020, uh, 2014 after Russia's takeover in Crimea, in which they also sought to ensure the European Union uh, ensure the European Union sanctions were not dodged in Switzerland to hundreds more people and businesses. But going further, Switzerland is thus taking a tougher line with regards to Russia, Parliament told reporters in Bern, the capital. Uh, German government spoke. Uh, spokesperson Stefan uh, Hebenstreit said Friday that every country decides in a sovereign way about its actions. If you were to ask me where I'd be, uh, whether I'd be happy if Switzerland supported the EU sanctions, then I would clearly say yes. 
However, in Switz uh, Switzerland is also anxious to safeguard its role as a diplomatic go-between for countries, one of which is Russia. The Swiss government represents the interests of the former Soviet Republic of Georgia in Moscow and Russia's interests in Tbilisi? I think I'm saying that wrong. Uh, the Georgian capital, under an arrangement set up after the two countries broke off bilateral ties during their conflict in 2008. It's important to the Federal Council that implementing these measures doesn't cut off talks between Switzerland and the countries affected, said Parliament. Switzerland wants to be able to offer its services to the countries in conflict if these countries wish. If Switzerland were to automatically adopt the sanctions imposed by the EU or other countries, it could no longer credibly play the traditional role for which it is valued worldwide. The respected Swiss daily tags uh, and Ziger reported... Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky asked his Swiss counterpart on Saturday to act as a neutral mediator between Ukraine and Russia and help work towards a ceasefire between the two countries. Notably in the context of a Human Rights Council meeting in Geneva openly on uh, opening Monday, the Swiss Foreign Ministry did not confirm any such communication. Okay, that's interesting. I am curious, though, how, what is a... Uh, why? So I understand trying to communicate with Russia for a ceasefire. I, I, I get that. There's way too much bloodshed when you don't. Um, but at the same time, you have to be very, very careful to make sure that the negotiations when you engage in that will be in your favor. Because uh, you don't want to sit down at the table and then Russia act like they're playing all the they have all the cards to play and then go fine we will no longer fire upon your soil uh, as long as you understand which soil is yours and which soil is ours and then do crimea to electric boogaloo like you you have to be you have to be fucking careful with shit like that but said geneva hosted a summit between russian president uh, president vladimir putin and the united states president joe biden in june as well as a couple of bilateral meetings in recent weeks as tensions brewed over ukraine the Swiss relish their role as reputations uh, and reputations as a skilled neutral host for such international gatherings and a hub for international organizations like the United Nations and the International Red Cross in Geneva. Pandora, thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, the push and pull felt by the Swiss could grow. Some Western countries announced or were preparing individual sanctions against Putin and his foreign ministry, uh, Sergei uh, Lavrov, including possible travel bans. Switzerland is unlikely to go that far. Lavrov himself is expected to be on hand in Geneva on Tuesday for a session of the Human Rights Council. Economic concerns, not just the political neutrality that is enshrined in Swiss law, could also figure into Swiss calculations. Geneva is a major hub for commodities tra uh, commodity trading like oil and wheat that matter to Russia and Ukraine, and is reported to be favor a favored stomping ground for Russian oligarchs and other economic elites to, uh, drawn to the low-tax and privacy-minded banks and policies in Switzerland. I feel like at some point the neutrality is pointless. Yeah, uh, Vegar says that's the thing with Russia's offers of negotiation. Just before they put their nuclear forces on their equivalent of DEFCON 2 and are still demanding the meeting to be on the Belarusian border. As Belarus is uh, pushing to become a nuclear power again. Yeah, that's... Yep. Huh. The June report by the Swiss embassy in Moscow said roughly 80% of Russia's commodities trade goes through the Swiss financial service centers of Geneva, Zug, Lugano, and Zurich. Major Russian energy and commodity firms have offices in Switzerland. According to the Bank of International Settlements, Russia deposits in Swiss financial institutions totaled the equivalent of nearly $11 billion at the end of the third quarter last year. That represented about 30% of the total Russian deposits overseas and nearly $36 billion, according to BIS figures. So Switzerland agreeing with the European Union... Uh, based what seems to be on the history of Russia with Crimea, uh, not wanting to see them encroach further out into areas, they're having to try to strike a delicate middle ground between being a mediator, 
being an unbiased mediator, but also putting enough of a stranglehold on Russia so that they cannot be complicit in what they're doing. I do not envy anybody in the position where they have to be a unbiased mediator and b uh, offer punishment towards a particular nation. Uh, the more panics, the more he panics and does publicly, the more people are going to hate him if he keeps doing this. He's going to get Mussolini'd. Okay, I'm just reading the reading the chat right now. So I don't know. Again, I just I do not envy anybody in that position. I don't. Um, but I do agree that when a, when a country is invading another sovereign nation, and it's not for stopping human rights violations uh, or anything tangible, it's literally he wants to bring them back into the USSR. He wants to bring, he wants to geographically position Russia the way it was positioned geographically during the time of the USSR, before so much of that uh, country was lost and became its own individual independent countries. That does not seem to me to be a good reason to do so. It, it doesn't. And I know that Russian propaganda has said that there are Nazis in Ukraine, which, I mean, this is this is true on a technical level. Every country has Nazis in it. Every fucking one. There's always going to be somebody who agrees uh, with fascism at some point. Basically, do countries have idiots in them? Yes. Okay, cool. Glad we established that. Uh, that's not a reason to fucking invade a country, though. That's not. It's not like the government is made up entirely of Nazis. It's not like they're engaging in in human rights violations in the same way. There are some things that are uh, awkward uh, to consider uh, that I've seen happening as well, but that's for another video uh, entirely. So I don't know. Bear in mind with all of this. A lot of countries are in a very difficult spot. Even the United States is in the spot of having to determine whether or not it wants to risk a uh, nuclear war on itself, uh, given what's going on in Russia. Uh, while I advocate for utilization of United States forces in Ukraine to help repel the invasion, I understand the position of not wanting the, the blowback that comes from that. Said it goes deeper than Soviet ideology. Putin reveres a mythologized Russian empire. I mean, a mythologized Russian empire is part of Soviet ideology. He wants to be Tsar. He wants to be Tsar. So it's... There's a lot of moving pieces. And with all of this, bear in mind, I'm just trying to throw information out there uh, as I find it, as it is given to me, uh, so that people can be as informed as they can be. But do bear in mind that you do need to do your own research with stuff like this. You do need to look at more sources than just me to come to any conclusions. I am by no means an expert on, on anything. But I do believe that with my platform, it's irresponsible not to cover this. So... If you want to support the channel, you know what to do. As always, insert end of video tagline here.